Welcome to Your Social Now What? Find out which networks are right for you and how to use them. You can use the tips and tools we share in today's webinar to grow your business. You can be a marketer. All it takes is constant contact. If you've attended our beginner social media webinar, Basics of Social Media, we briefly overviewed each of the top five social networks, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Instagram, so you could get a better idea of what each network was about. Today's webinar is going to go more in-depth into each of these social networks, and that's why we're here today. You want to make sure that you're using the right social media network to promote your business or nonprofit, and each of these networks is a little bit different. Some may be a good fit for you and some may not, and that's okay. You don't need to use every social network. We're going to help you find out what's right for your business so you can focus your time on the social networks that matter for you, your business, and your audience. Within each network, we'll look at the following. We'll start with the business value for each social network. How can using it help your business? We'll give you tips on the right way to use the social network for your business. You'll learn about what content really works for each social network. We'll also cover how to measure your progress using analytics tools. And we'll give you some next steps for using these social networks for your marketing. After we've covered the top five social networks, we'll take a look at how you can create content that works and how to save time by curating, which is sharing content created by others. Next, you'll get some tips on how to create photos, word images, and videos for social media. And then you'll get some next steps you can use in your social media marketing. Are you ready? Let's jump into a deeper look at the social networks, starting with Facebook. So we know that Facebook is the largest social media sharing site for people who use the internet and businesses who want to promote themselves online. This is the Facebook page for Honeypot Hill Orchards, a farm stand located in Stowe, Massachusetts. How could Facebook help your business? Because of that large audience. Facebook is the largest of all the social networks. It's been around since 2004 and there's over a billion users who are checking it multiple times during the day. Facebook is your best chance of all the social networks to reach a large group of people. Well, how do you do that? It's important to start with the content you're sharing. If you post things people want to see from you, they'll be more interactive with your business and become loyal fans. You do need to be aware of how Facebook shows posts in the newsfeed. Facebook users do not see every single post from every friend and business they follow because it has an algorithm that shows people content based on their past interactions with friends and businesses. And we'll break that down for you. Facebook's Insights tool can help you find out what content is most appealing to your followers, and that will help you stand out. It will give you an edge over the algorithm and help you to reach more people. What content really works on Facebook? Well, marketing analytics company Quintly did a study and found that the types of posts that get the most interaction from fans on Facebook are videos, photos, and status updates. Videos are extremely popular on Facebook. They grab people's attention and put them in the middle of the action. And that's exactly what this video from Honey Pot Hill does. It's a virtual tour of their farm, corn maze, and store. Create and share videos that provide viewers with the experience of being wherever you are. Show them how something works. Give them a behind the scenes look. Share videos that are entertaining, that are about something funny or interesting. The best practices for sharing photo content are similar to video content. And it's extremely easy to create because we're all walking around with a camera in our pocket. Your photos should reflect who you are and what you do. Show off what happens during your day. Show off your products and services and the people you meet. It's okay to take a selfie with your employees or customers and share it on Facebook. This photo collage from Honey Pot Hill gives you a good idea of what visitors can find there during an upcoming weekend. With all of this emphasis on visual content, you might not think that status updates would be among the top content, but they were third in Quintley's Facebook study for getting engagement. Make your status updates work for you by being helpful, being conversational, and asking questions to get your audience talking. This status update from Honey Pot Hill is a helpful post letting people know about their Columbus Day hours, available apple varieties, and attractions at the farm. We mentioned earlier that Facebook has an algorithm that determines what each user sees on Facebook when they view their newsfeed. Edrink tries to figure out what users want to see by looking at what content and what pages they are engaging with. Here's what the algorithm looks at. Your fans' interests. Fans who have interacted with your page or post recently will have a better chance of seeing your content. How well your post is done with other Facebook users. A popular post has a better chance of appearing in the newsfeed. The performance of your past posts. Once you start posting content that works, you'll be in a better position for future posts. 
the type of posts that your fans prefer. Someone who has interacted with videos in the past will be more likely to see your next video post. Timeliness is important. Recent posts will get priority over older content. So, the more a user engages with content from your page, the more Facebook will display your page's content to that user. The best way to make EdgeRank work for you is to post great and compelling content that your audience will comment on and share with friends and family on Facebook. The best way to find out what content works for your fans is to take advantage of Facebook's Insights tool, which provides you with a ton of great reports and data. Here are four reports that will help you create the right Facebook content. Click the post link to find out what types of posts are doing well with your audience. Videos, photos, status updates, or links. If you see that there are content types that aren't getting as many clicks, likes, comments, and shares as others, don't waste time on them. Focus on the types that are getting the best engagement. Speaking of engagement, click on the Reach tab and scroll down to the chart that shows your likes, comments, and shares over time. You can click on particular days on the chart to take a look at what content was getting interactions that day and get a better idea of what content is getting the most engagement. You should also take a look at who are the people interacting with your content. Click the People tab and then the People Engaged section. This tells you exactly which age groups and genders are actively engaging with your content. It also shows you what country and city they're in as well as their preferred language. Take a look at this regularly. How does this compare to the demographics of people who like your page? Is this the audience you thought you were reaching or want to reach? You may need to make some changes to target the people you want to communicate with on Facebook. Everyone who uses Facebook for marketing wants to know when is the best time and day of the week to post to Facebook. The answer is going to be different for every page because everyone's audience is different. Fortunately for you, Facebook Insights shows you the best day and time to post for your audience. Click the Post tab and then the When Your Fans Are Online section. This report looks at the past seven days and shows you how many of your fans are using Facebook for each day of the week and each hour of the day. So it's really easy to find out the times and days that are most popular with your fans and you can schedule your content to post when a lot of your audience will be online to see it. What are your next steps with Facebook marketing? Take the best practices you've learned today and find out what content is successful. Start with what you know already if you've been using Facebook for your business. Try sharing the content that works, videos, photos, and status updates. Check your Facebook insights to find out what's getting the most engagement from your fans. Pay attention to content types, but also to what topics, information, or products you're talking about in the content. Then keep sharing what's popular with your fans so they'll continue to see your content in the newsfeed. Be strategic about when you post. Use Facebook Insights to find out when your fans are active on Facebook and more likely to see your posts. Then use Facebook's scheduling tool to target those optimal times and days. Take some time out on a regular basis to check out your Facebook Insights. Your audience's preference and behaviors may change over time, so make sure you are adapting in order to provide them with what will work for your audience and your business. Let's move on to our second social network, Twitter. Why should you use Twitter for your business? It's the fastest way to reach your audience. Twitter is a fast-moving social network where posts are shown chronologically in real time, so you can check it to find the latest news and updates. There is no algorithm for Twitter, so everything you see posted is happening right now. This Twitter profile is for the nonprofit Strong Women, Strong Girls of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and Boston, Massachusetts, and they use a lot of the best practices we're going to cover for Twitter. How can you stand out and promote yourself on Twitter? by creating and sharing tweets that work best for the Twitter environment and for your followers. We'll talk about using images and some things you should keep in mind with the text of your tweets. You could really build a following by being helpful on Twitter. People follow businesses to find out the latest news or to get insider tips. Think of Twitter as an extension of customer service or the FAQs on your website. Analytics are important on Twitter and you can use the data you find there to get audience and content insight that will help you be strategic about how you use this social network. Everything is being posted and displayed on Twitter in real time. If you're following a lot of people and businesses, that's a lot of information coming at you at once. How can you make your business stand out here? Social media marketing analytics company Buffer analyzed 1 million tweets, and here are a few tips they found that will make you a more effective marketer on Twitter. Use images with your tweets. Twitter started out with only text posts and only started allowing multimedia tweets back in 2011. But photos aren't used by everyone posting to Twitter, so including a photo or video will help get your tweets noticed. Twitter displays uploaded photos in a large format, so yours will stand out like this photo from Strong Women, Strong Girls of a recent event. There's a 140 character limit on Twitter, but that doesn't mean you have to use all of the space. 
Shorter tweets do better on Twitter. Buffer learned that a post that's just text or text with a link like you see here in this Strong Women, Strong Girls tweet, the photo is pulled up automatically from the page you link to as a preview. It should be between 120 and 140 characters. Posts that have an image uploaded should be between 20 and 40 characters. So your shorter posts will get more engagement. One reason for this is when someone retweets your tweet, it inserts your Twitter handle and the text from your original tweet. If you're maxed out on 140 characters in the post, the person who is retweeting you will have to take some time to, to rewrite the retweet to fit. Short tweets, same time. Use hashtags in your tweets. Buffer study shows that hashtags will get you more engagement and they have a longer life cycle. Buffer study shows that hashtags will get you more engagement and they have a longer life cycle. If you're not familiar with what a hashtag is, it's a word or phrase with letters and numbers with a pound sign at the front. When you use a hashtag on social media, that phrase is turned into a link. Anyone who clicks on the link will see other messages that use the same hashtag. Hashtags help call attention to the topics you're talking about in your message, and more people will see your tweets if they're linked to conversations happening on Twitter around certain topics. Strong women, strong girls use their own hashtag, an event hashtag, and the relevant hashtag, like a girl, because they related to the content and conversation. I mentioned earlier that you can gain a loyal following on Twitter if you're using it to be helpful. Twitter users follow people and businesses that provide them with interesting and useful information. They know they can go back to that Twitter account to find the latest information on something or to ask a question. Tweet links to blog posts you've written or helpful posts from expert blogs or news sites that you read regularly. Share interesting facts, stats, or tips that will inform your audience or help them accomplish something. It's very common for customers to use Twitter to ask questions of businesses or experts. Watch your notifications for followers who need help and tag your business in their tweets. There are plenty of chances to participate in the conversations happening on Twitter and add value to discussions. Respond to followers who tag you or retweet you. Click on hashtags you're using to see what others are saying and add your thoughts to the conversation. The more your name appears in discussions, the more people will think of you or your business when they need information on the topics you talk about. Make sure to strike a balance of content on Twitter. Every tweet shouldn't be blasting out information about your business. Offer other sources that your followers will find helpful. Talk to people and answer questions. If you're not measuring, you're just guessing when it comes to Twitter content. Use Twitter's analytics tool to determine what tweets are most popular with your followers. You can find it in your profile or go to analytics.twitter.com. Here's what you should be paying attention to. Your top mentions. When you go to your analytics dashboard, Twitter analytics will show you the top tweet that mentioned your Twitter handle that got the most engagement over the last 28 days. Pay attention to these mentions. Follow the people who mention you and follow the people who retweeted the tweet. They've already indicated that they're interested in what you have to say, so now's the time to start building a relationship with these people through Twitter. Click the Tweets tab in your analytics and sort your tweets by top tweets to find out what content did the best. Keep an eye on what got the highest engagement and pay attention to what hashtags, topics, links, and images you used. Continue to create similar content that your followers are interested in. Twitter Analytics also has a breakdown of your engagements. It shows you the average rate of engagement, link clicks, retweets, likes, and replies on a given day. Start with your average and set a goal for yourself. Change your Twitter content and watch to see how your engagement improves over time. You'll also be able to find out who your followers are. Click over to the Audiences tab to get a closer look at the interests, occupation, location, and spending habits of your Twitter followers. Adjust your Twitter content to appeal to your followers or change your content completely if you want to attract a different group. We've covered quite a bit of information on Twitter. What can you do next to make your Twitter marketing a success? Look for trends throughout your Twitter content. What's getting the most interactivity? Are people interested in the blog post links you're sharing, the hashtags you're using, or the type of tweet, such as a tweet with a photo versus a text tweet? Experiment with the content that works. Not using images, short tweets, or hashtags? Try them and see what happens. Continue to share the content your audience wants to see in your tweets. Be consistent in what you're sharing. You'll earn their trust and they'll come back to you when they need information or are looking for something interesting. Make it easy on yourself. Use a free scheduling tool like Hootsuite or Buffer to schedule your tweets in advance so you don't have to be online all the time. Buffer has an optimal timing tool that analyzes your tweets and tells you the best time to schedule your posts. Check your analytics regularly to see if your trends change, and then adjust your tweets to fit your audience's preferences and demographics. Our third social network today is LinkedIn. 
let's take a closer look at what LinkedIn can do for you. LinkedIn is a social network that you can use to really stand out with your expertise. It's a social networking site that's focused on businesses and careers. As a user, you can create a profile that includes your resume and skills, and you can post status updates. Businesses can create a business account that showcases their products, services, and news, and you can post content there as well. We're going to focus today on the business page for LinkedIn and not the personal profile. The LinkedIn business page you see here is for Fogden Bookkeeping, which is located on the island of Nantucket in Massachusetts. When you post updates on LinkedIn for your business page, share what you know. Is there a new fact or stat that you learned about recently? Have you written a blog post that offers tips or advice? Or have you read a great post from an expert in your field? Share what you know so you can educate your followers. They'll appreciate the free advice. Use LinkedIn to become an information source. Share the things you know or write about, but also provide a diverse selection of other sources. If you read blogs or news sources about your industry, it's okay to share something that they posted. You're helping your audience by providing this information, and they will keep coming back to you because you are the go-to person who's on top of the latest news in your industry. Of course, you need to monitor what's working for you on LinkedIn, so take advantage of the data that its analytics platform provides. What should you post on LinkedIn to set you apart from other businesses? Start with blog posts, your own posts, and helpful blog posts that you read from other sources. Users check LinkedIn to find out what's new in their industry or to discover what new products or services are available. Write about this information in your blog and link to it as Bogdan Bookkeeping did for this post about CPAs. Offer your opinion on what's happening or link to another source that has the information and include comments on what you learn in the blog post. It's okay to share a link and include an excerpt from the post as well. Small Biz Trends suggests writing long form posts between 500 to 1200 words. They'll get attention because people want as much information as possible to help them make decisions and improve their business. Use images to illustrate your posts. Posts with images receive a 98% higher comment rate. Images could be a word image or a quote, which can be text over a background or next to a photo, or a photo of you on the job, behind the scenes, at an event, or with a new product. We know that photos grab attention, so stand out in the LinkedIn newsfeed with some visual interest. Humorous images are fine on LinkedIn as long as they are relevant. Bogdan Bookkeeping shared a funny e-card about tax refunds that followers and colleagues would appreciate. Posts with links will get you 200% more engagement. If there's something on your website, an industry-related website or blog, or a video that could be helpful to your followers, post a link to it. LinkedIn will preview the web page you're linking to by pulling an image from the page, the title, and an excerpt of the text. This is really helpful to followers because it gives them a little bit of information and context before they click. Sharing the content we just talked about will help you build your reputation as a credible expert on LinkedIn. People will know that you are a huge source of information on certain topics. Build on that by doing the following things. Share news about your business and your industry. It's okay to be more vocal about your business on LinkedIn because people are looking for that information here. It's not like on Facebook where your new product announcement gets posted next to links to funny videos in the newsfeed. People are here to do business. Have discussions on LinkedIn. It's not enough to link to information. You are an expert. Offer your perspective. Is the information you're linking to helpful, interesting, just good to know, or game-changing for your industry or business? Why? Ask for others' opinions on it. Open the door to discussion, and people won't hesitate to add their two cents. Your LinkedIn business page is searchable, so be strategic about the keywords you use on your page. What subjects and topics are the focus of your expertise? List them in your company description and the specialty section of your page. LinkedIn users will be looking for businesses to find information on certain topics, so make sure yours gets found in those searches. You need to post consistently to get noticed on LinkedIn. It's simple. The more you post, the more visible your company is. Posting 20 status updates each month will help you to reach 60% of your audience. Your LinkedIn analytics will help you find out what information is most appealing to your followers. When you visit your analytics dashboard, you'll see a list of your most recent updates. Focus on the clicks and interactions. These numbers will tell you how many followers were interested in your content and clicked your links or your photos. The engagement number adds up the number of times a post was liked, shared, or commented on. You can dig a little bit more into the engagement metrics further down in the page. This chart allows you to separate the different types of engagement and see how they've changed over time. Scroll down on the analytics page to see the demographics of your followers. Remember, LinkedIn followers provide a lot of information on their profile page, so you'll get a very good picture of who they are. 
click the drop down menu to view by seniority, industry, size of their company, their job function, and which of your followers are your employees or non-employees of your company. At the very bottom of your analytics dashboard, you'll find the demographics of people who have viewed your LinkedIn business page. Use the drop down menu to find the details of these visitors, seniority, company size, and job function. Now you know there's a lot more to LinkedIn than just posting resumes. It's a professional space for you to promote your business. What can you do next to get noticed here? Create a blog to write about what you do, what you know, and what you think so you can build your reputation as an expert. If you don't want to set up a blog on your own, try using LinkedIn's publisher tool. You can only use it for your personal profile and not a business page, but it's a good place for you to create blog posts. Your business page can link to posts published by your personal profile. The publisher tool comes with analytics, so you'll be able to track how well your content is doing. Be aware of the LinkedIn content that's getting the best results from you and continue to share the information that your followers are actively engaging with. Look for content that exists beyond your website. Offer your followers a diverse collection of content so they can get a well-rounded view of your industry. Sharing content from other sources shows that you are tapped into everything that's happening and you're a reliable source. And of course, monitor your analytics to be aware of content trends, who the people are who make up your audience, and the demographics of visitors that come to your page. Are they the people you want? Are they who you expected? Share the content that works best for them. Now we've come to our next social network on the list, Pinterest. Pinterest is different from the other social networks because it's primarily about sharing visuals. It's a social network where users pin images of things they like to virtual bulletin boards. It's a way for users to visually bookmark things they want to buy, hobbies, interests, and information. These pins are typically linked to a website where you can buy things, learn more about hobbies, read blog posts about various topics, or visit a webpage with more information about the pin. And that's where the business value lies with Pinterest. You can use it to drive people to your website, get their attention with your pins, and make it easy for them to take that next step. Start by pulling people in with the images you share. Make them colorful and visually appealing. Show details of your products or use word images to illustrate an idea or something that's not physically tangible, like a blog post, a fact, a stat, a tip, or a quote. You can build a loyal follower base if you use Pinterest to promote products that people want, but also make an effort to share pins that provide value. Share content that helps them solve a problem, learn something new, or simply interesting or entertaining. It's important to use Pinterest analytics tools to discover which of your pins are doing well. Use this data to determine what to pin in the future. The Pinterest newsfeed is an image traffic jam. You're seeing nothing but visuals with small text descriptions. How do you make your pins stand out among the clutter? Start with the quality of your images. If something isn't visually appealing, don't pin it. Share images with bright, vibrant colors. Use professional photos of your products. You can still take great photos with your smartphone for your pins, just make sure they're good quality and not tiny or fuzzy. Word images work well on Pinterest. Take an image and write a description in text next to it. Create a quote image with a popular or relevant quote overlaid on a bright color or interesting image. Or use a similar combination with the title of a blog post that you want to pin. Although you do have text descriptions for your pins, the visuals are going to get people's attention first, so they will notice your text on your image before seeing the pin description. The size of your image will also help get your content noticed. Long images take up more room in the Pinterest feed than something small and square. Dominate the Pinterest feed by using a large, long image for your pins if possible. Your pins should help people find your products and provide them with valuable information. Share the beautiful product photos that are on your website. Your product pins should link back to the place on your website where you can purchase the product right away. If you have a blog, create images for your posts and pin them on Pinterest. People are looking for things to buy, but they are also looking for how-to information and tips, and they'll bookmark it by repinning your content to their boards. Be strategic about the keywords you use on Pinterest. Think about search when you create board titles and descriptions and your pin descriptions. A board called Fall, our favorite season, is not going to get found as often as top desserts to make for fall. Pinterest is like a visual version of Google, Yahoo, or Bing. People are going there to type in products, colors, and other specific information to find exactly what they want. Give them a description that has the right searchable keywords for your pins and boards. It's easy to become self-promotional on Pinterest if the only pins you're bookmarking are your own. 
Look for other resources that might appeal to the lifestyle of your brand and complement your products, services, or information to become a one-stop shop. Pinterest has a great analytics tool that will give you a detailed overview of how your content is doing and the demographics of people who follow you. When you go to your analytics dashboard, you'll see three different sections. The first is your Pinterest profile, which shows engagement information on your pins. Second is your audience, which tracks follower growth and interest. The third has information on pins from your website. This is the website address that's listed in your Pinterest profile. Click over to the Pinterest profile section to find out how much engagement your pins are getting. The repins and clicks tabs will show you how many shares your content has received and how many people clicked on the links in your pins over time. Pay attention to the popular content Pinterest displays in the repins and clicks to show you what pins are getting the most engagement and what links are interesting to Pinterest users. The pins from your website section of Pinterest Analytics looks at pins that Pinterest users have created from the images they've pinned from your website and how many pins have been created from your website. Take note of what people are pinning. This is really valuable information because it shows you what Pinterest users are interested in purchasing from you or what information they want to read from your website. Make sure you're pinning it too and include keywords in your pin description and your web pages to get that content found. The audience section of Pinterest Analytics can really help you target your Pinterest content to match the people who are following you and pinning your pins. Take a look at demographic information like location and gender. Are you pinning content that appeals to them? You could go even further by checking out the audience interest to see what topics they're pinning the most on Pinterest and what boards and brands they follow. Look for patterns and pin relevant content about your business and industry that fits those interests. Now that you have the right tips and tools to use Pinterest for marketing, what are your next steps? Pin the right images to get noticed. Make them visually interesting. Include bright colors. And use longer pins to take up more real estate in the Pinterest feed. People might be pinning content from your website. Check your analytics to be sure. Whether or not they are, add great visuals to your website that are pin-worthy. Pinterest pins have a long shelf life beyond their post date. Use the right keywords to get them found in a Pinterest search. Make analytics part of your Pinterest routine. Check them regularly to make sure you're on top of what content works and what interests you can pin to connect with your audience. Our last social network today is Instagram. Instagram is different than the other social networks we covered today because most of the activity takes place in the Instagram app on your smartphone. You can access Instagram on your desktop web browser, but you can't post photos from there. Instagram users post images and videos to the Instagram app. This is the Instagram profile for Extend Yoga, located in Bethesda and Rockville, Maryland. The benefit to using Instagram to promote your business is that photos allow your followers to get to know you and your business. Showing your audience parts of your business they wouldn't otherwise get a chance to see can help you to begin to build relationships with them. When you share with your audience how you get things done, they can begin to feel as though you're relatable and someone they want to know more about. Be choosy about which images you post to Instagram. Don't share everything. Photos you share here should be visually interesting, tell a story, or convey an experience. These kinds of photos help to put your audience in the moment. Use photos to take them along during your day-to-day -day activities or special events. Another difference between Instagram and other social networks is that it does not have a native analytics platform. You need to use a third-party tool to measure your Instagram content. One tool that we suggest is called Iconosquare. What should you be sharing on Instagram to form relationships and grow customer loyalty? Photos, of course, but not just any photos. Be strategic about taking your photos and staging them. Your photos need to capture attention. Can you use bright colors, an interesting angle, or does this image tell a great story about who you are and what you do? This post from Extend Yoga definitely stands out with the bright color of the yoga pants, and it tells a story of the yoga instructors who are dedicated and put in a lot of time to practice and improve their skills. Word images are very popular on Instagram, especially quotes. We'll talk about some tools you can use later on in today's session to create these types of images. Do a search on Instagram with the hashtag quotes or a search on Google, Yahoo, or Bing on quotes in your industry. Create an image from relevant quotes and share them on Instagram. Word images, such as facts, stats, or tips, do well here. Word images are a good type of content to test. Try mixing it up, post photos of people in your products, and then add some word images to see what people respond to the most. You may be surprised. Some businesses find that images with people don't get as much engagement as photos without. You can share videos on Instagram, but you are limited to 15 second videos. Take a video of a quick tip like Extend Yoga does to demonstrate a yoga pose and preview an upcoming class or show people what's happening right now where you are. 
demonstrate a product, or introduce your followers to an employee or a customer. You can experiment with the timing of your video. It could be real time or try a slow-mo or time-lapse video to make your content more interesting. The key with Instagram content is to make your audience feel like they are experiencing what you're experiencing. Make them feel like they're there with you, seeing what you see. This helps to build community around a shared experience and your followers will feel more connected to you. Extend Yoga often shares photos behind the scenes of your yoga studio at events or during training and practices. It gives the followers an inside look at what's happening there. You can do the same thing. The behind the scenes of your business is more interesting to your audience than you may think. Use visual content on Instagram to educate your followers. Show them how to do something so they feel empowered. This photo from Extend Yoga talks about the triangle pose and encourages followers to check out a new blog post on the studio's blog to learn more. Hashtags are everywhere on Instagram and they can help to get your content noticed. Instagram posts with 11 or more hashtags get the highest engagement. Use hashtags that are relevant to your business and the content in your photo. People click on hashtags and search for hashtags for topics they're interested in and you want them to find your posts. You could do a search on Instagram for different word combinations to see what hashtags are more popular. Instagram will show you how many posts have been created with particular hashtags. Choose ones that are popular but not too popular. Your posts will get lost if 5 million photos are using the same hashtag, but a hashtag that is tied to only 3 photos won't get you attention. When you post to Instagram, you have the option of tagging your location in the photo. Be sure to tag your business or whatever the location is of your content. Instagram users do click on locations to find out more about them and you want your content to represent what's happening at your location. Instagram doesn't have an analytics tool. However, there are lots of third-party tools you can use to measure how well your Instagram marketing is doing. A tool that we recommend is Iconosquare. The Iconosquare dashboard gives you an overall look at how many posts you've created to date as well as your likes, comments, and followers. You can see your average engagement per photo and the top five images for likes and comments. Click the Rolling Month Analysis tab to get a total of likes and comments for the last 30 days. You'll also see your top five photos for likes and comments for the past month. This will help you to get a better idea of what to keep posting in order to get the best engagement from followers. If you're testing something, such as photos versus word images, this is an easy way to see what content type your followers like the most. When you click the Optimization tab, you'll find data that helps you figure out when you should be posting on Instagram to get the most engagement from followers. This chart shows when you have been posting and highlights the times and days your posts are getting engagement. If you haven't been posting at the times your audience is most active, start now. The Instagram feed is a real-time chronological feed, so timing is key. Scroll down in the optimization reports to find hashtag data. The hashtag chart compares your hashtags with the top 100 hashtags used on Instagram. Try using some of the top hashtags, but only if they're relevant, to get your posts seen by more people. The hashtags in this chart are all active links, so you can click on them and see an Instagram feed of images using the hashtag in case you want to get some ideas of what people are posting. We just shared a lot of tips on how to use Instagram for marketing. What are your next steps with Instagram? Use Instagram to illustrate the story of your business. Create visually interesting posts that will help your audience feel like they are part of the experience and help them understand who you are and what you do. Hashtags will help you to get your Instagram content in front of more people. Do searches on Instagram to find relevant hashtags and check out Iconosquare's list of the top hashtags to see if any may fit your content. It might help to keep a list of hashtags handy and save that list on your phone so you can easily copy and paste those hashtags into your Instagram captions. Iconosquare has a lot of helpful data and one of the most important insights you can find there is the best time and day for you to post. Be strategic. Post at the moment that matters when a majority of your audience is scanning their feed to get the most engagement possible. Make Iconosquare part of your regular Instagram marketing strategy. Take a look at your best content every month. Take time throughout the year to compare trends you're seeing from month to month and then adapt your content to fit what's working well for you. Now that we've given you a closer look at the top five social networks, let's talk about content. How can you make sure you're creating the best content possible? We'll also talk about the right way to curate content, which is reposting something that someone else has created. The content you'll create for social media will vary a bit from network to network, but we do have a general guideline for how to think about the content you'll create. Here's how you should split up your content. If you have attended our Basics of Social Media webinar, you've seen this before, so this slide will be a quick reminder. 50% of your content should be interesting and entertaining to your audience. Remember that people love to use social media to find out what's new and interesting with their friends, family, and businesses they like. 
be conversational, ask questions, ask for opinions. People love to talk about themselves. So open that door by being interactive. You can also just brighten their day. Share an inspirational quote image or an interesting fact or a fun or funny photo that relates to your business or industry. 30% of the content you share should provide information and be useful for your readers. Think tips, stats, education, and curated content from blogs or news sites. Finally, the remaining 20% can be about your business. It could be about calls to action, asking people to take that next step, purchase something, register for an event, read a blog post, learn about a new product or service. Keep in mind that it's okay to use calls to action, but not to hammer readers with the buy now message. The great news is that you can curate content, meaning that you can find content created by others and share it on social media. Think about a curator at an art museum. That person uses their expertise to collect and present artwork from many different sources and arrange it in a way that's educational and organized. They're not responsible for painting every canvas. Your curated content could be a link to a news article related to your organization with a brief paragraph including your perspective. The example on your screen is from a Facebook post from a craft store, Three Kittens Needle Arts. They shared some information from a knitting community, Ravelry.com. Here's a tweet from chocolate company Taza Chocolate on their Twitter feed. It links to a blog post and a recipe for chocolate souffles that's on a website called The Kitchen. All they had to do was write a brief introduction and then link to the articles. It's that easy. Your audience will come to rely on you as an expert in your field. Let's say that you run an animal shelter and you come across an article about coyotes in your area. You could introduce that link by giving some helpful tips for pet owners to keep their dogs and cats safe. There are lots of different places online where you can find content to share on social media. Read your local and regional news. Maybe you've been mentioned, or maybe you have something to say about the goings on in your community. A lot of news sites offer their recent content for free. Just make sure that if you link to content on a news site that it's not something you need a subscription to read. You can read blogs related to your field. One way to easily gather lots of blog posts is through Feedly, a free tool that aggregates blogs from all over. You can customize a Feedly account by selecting the areas you're interested in reading about. It's a great way to find content you'll share on social media. You should follow others on social media. This is a world of almost infinite possibilities. Let's go back to that animal shelter example. They would want to follow other shelters, national groups like the ASPCA, pet retailers, and other animal advocacy groups and share content from those sources. Set up Google Alerts. Google will aggregate pages that mention a phrase you created an alert for. You should definitely set one using your organization's name to keep an eye on what people are saying about you online. Subscribe to email lists. This is a great way to get ideas for content and see what other people are sharing. One way to get creative and great content to easily share on social media is to have others create it for you. Share photos, videos, quotes, or reviews that have been created by employees, customers, or clients. And finally, you should always provide links to the original source and let people know why you're sharing the content. You don't need to create brand new pieces of content for every social network or curate different content for each one. Here is an example of a store, La Provence in Rockport, Massachusetts, repurposing visual content. They took a few great photos of products from a new line in their store and made a photo collage. La Provence then shared the image on Facebook with an announcement about their new product and a reminder about their store hours on Instagram with a cute caption and in an email that also announced the line as well as an upcoming community event. You could do the same thing. Take content that your audience will find interesting and share it on whatever social networks you use. Let's move on to visual content, photos, word images, and video. What tools can you use to create them, and how do you do it? There are a lot of image editing tools you can use on your phone to create content, starting with your smartphone's built-in camera. Most smartphone cameras come with some basic image editing tools that you can use to enhance your photos, but you can actually go beyond that by choosing from a wide variety of apps to edit your photos. Some of our favorites are, Instagram. We talked about Instagram, which people use to share photos. It includes editing tools, and you can save your Instagram images on your phone and share them on any social network. There's also PicStitch. PicStitch is a free app that allows you to create photo collages that you could save to your phone and upload to Instagram or any social network. And WordSwag. With the WordSwag app, you can add text over a photo and choose from different colors and typefaces to use. WordSwag is $2.99 at your phone's app store. You may want to use desktop tools for larger images. PowerPoint is one that most of you have probably already tried to create presentations, but you might not know that you can easily use it for editing your images and adding text. You purchase this software from Microsoft, and some of you may already have it on your computer. You can use PowerPoint to design images on a slide, and then you can save that slide as a JPEG or GIF and then upload it to your social networks. 
but there are a lot of great options for online desktop tools, including Canva. This is a free online image editor that has tons of templates for Instagram, Pinterest pins, Facebook cover photos, and more. And you can also use it to create collages or your own original designs with overlays and text. Although Canva is free, some stock images and designs you may want to use do cost a dollar each. And there's PicMonkey. PicMonkey is a free online tool that allows you to edit photos, create collages, and add overlays and text onto images. Although PicMonkey is free, you can get more features with the paid version, which is $33 per year. Photos are a frequent and necessary piece for visual content. Sometimes you may find you need a photo that you don't have or can't create on your own. There are a variety of online stock photo sites where you can search for just the right photo that fits your needs. They are a great resource and can work well for visual content that's based around a theme, a tip, a fact, or a quote. It might be tempting, but it's never a good idea to just use any image you may find through a search, including sample stock photos with a watermark on them. There could be copyright issues associated with those images. They belong to someone else. When you're using stock photos, you purchase the rights to use the photo, or in some cases, you accept a free download and agree to certain credit and conditions. Fees can vary, so shop around what feels right for you and fits your budget. You'll have access to this list later on when you receive the slides, but here are some resources to find free or low-cost images. Some stock photo sites you could check out are freedigitalphotos.net, stockvault.net, and freeimages.com. Of course, you know how to take pictures, but how do you combine them with text to create a word image? Here's an example from PicMonkey. You can open up PicMonkey and choose a design template, then upload and edit your image, use the text tools to add text on top, and then save the image to your desktop. From there, you can share it on any social network you choose. If you don't want to use a photo with your word image, you don't have to. Start your design with whatever color you want in the background and then add your text. What kind of word images can you use on social media? They're a great way to visually share tips, which look really boring as just text. A photo or colorful background adds visual interest and gets noticed. Create word images with your favorite quotes and then share them on social media. Your word images can also talk about product promotions, sales, or upcoming events. Use them to share news, announcements, or updates about your business. When you're creating images, make sure you're using the correct size. Each social network displays photos differently. It's best to size your image to fit the specified size of its final destination. To make it easy on you, we designed this chart that you can use later on when creating images for Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, and YouTube. Let's turn to video. Video is a really advanced topic. You may be used to watching video on a large desktop screen, and some of you may have edited video on a desktop computer. It's now a lot simpler than that. Today we're going to talk about really easy ways to make short videos, and you can do that with your smartphone and share directly to social media through their apps. All smartphones have built-in video tools, and just like photos, there are lots of apps that you can add to your phone to create and edit videos and then share them through social network apps. With Instagram, you can publish short clips between 3 to 15 seconds long and share them to your Instagram feed and your Facebook page. You can upload your videos from your phone directly to Facebook through its app. YouTube has an app that allows you to edit and publish videos to the YouTube site. One thing to note about video, people have a short attention span, so avoid taking and sharing long videos. The average viewing of a video is actually 90 seconds. You all know what video is, of course, but what is live streaming video? The concept has been around for a while. Using your webcam or smartphone camera to broadcast live from wherever you are to an online audience via video apps. This is a great way to get your audience involved, include them in your experiences, have a conversation, and connect with them. How can you do this? Show your audience behind the scenes of your business. Give them a tour or let them meet the friendly faces you work with. Interact with your followers. Respond to their comments or shout outs during the broadcast. Invite them to ask you questions prior to or during the broadcast and give them helpful information and insights. Interview an expert at your business or in your industry. Train them on using a product or service. Live stream a demonstration. There's been a lot of attention lately around streaming video because of some new apps that have been introduced to make it easier. Let's take a look at them. These are the three newest live streaming apps, Periscope, Meerkat, and Blab. Here's how they work. You can install any of these apps on your phone and create an account by linking it to your Twitter profile. Meerkat allows you to also use your Facebook page to create an account. You can broadcast from or view a live stream on the mobile or desktop version of any of the apps, and you can save the video you create to your smartphone. Let's look at some details on how to use each app. When you broadcast using Periscope or Meerkat, you can only use one camera at a time. But with Blab, you can have up to four people broadcasting in a session. So while Periscope and Meerkat are good at providing the viewpoint of one person, Blab is kind of like having your own talk show. 
As far as scheduling your live streams, Periscope is more spontaneous. You just start your stream and go. Meerkat and Blab allow you to schedule broadcasts and promote them in advance so people can plan to attend and they'll see reminders. All of the apps allow you to share a link to your live session via Twitter as a way to promote and draw in more viewers. There are commenting tools for each app. Periscope users can type comments and click the heart button to show they like the live stream. Meerkat viewers can comment, like the video, and retweet it on Twitter. Blab viewers can comment as well and click the hand button to give the broadcast some props. A huge difference between Blab and the other apps is you could leave a broadcast seat open and invite a viewer to join the conversation and ask their questions live to the other guests. What happens to broadcasts after they end? With Periscope, they appear on your profile for only 24 hours. Meerkat broadcasts disappear when your live stream is over, so they don't appear in your profile. However, you can record the video on your phone for Periscope or Meerkat, so you can post that video on social media. Blab broadcasts are saved and permanently appear on your Blab profile. Live stream videos are great content to repurpose for social media. Share a link to your permanent Blab video or try uploading the Periscope or Meerkat videos you record on your phone to the social networks you want to use. We've covered a ton of information today. How do you make sense of all of it? What are your next steps? We're going to talk about planning, tools, and how you can supercharge your social media marketing by connecting it with email marketing. Something that can help a lot is an editorial calendar. And this can be as simple as a blank calendar you print out and keep at your desk or scheduling Facebook posts in your Outlook calendar. Having a calendar helps you figure out what to post. It lets you know that your important messages are getting out there. And it helps you to be consistent and interacting with your fans. You don't need to plan far in advance. Plan for the upcoming week. At the end of the week, start scheduling some content ideas for the next week. But also be flexible. Save some spaces for something that comes up at the last minute or to share something interesting you found. We covered the top five social networks today, but don't forget about email's role in social media marketing. Some of you may be on many of the social networks, but all of you are using email. Email remains the best way to reach people directly. But always remember that at the core of all of it is the relationship you build with your clients, your customers, your followers, if you're a nonprofit, with your supporters or volunteers. Having your email address will help you manage and nurture that relationship in a huge way. We talked about how the social networks work today, and you may have noticed something. They all have their own rules about who sees the content you post and how you can get in front of your audience. With email, you have control. You choose who you want to see your message, how it looks, and when you want to send it. You can use reporting to find out who actually opened and interacted with your content. You can find out who you're reaching and who are your most active customers. Email helps to enhance that two-way conversation you're already having on social media. So it's important to get your email communication in front of your social audience. Promote your emails across all of your social networks and talk about social media in your emails. If you are a constant contact customer, you can easily publish your email to your Facebook page, Twitter, and LinkedIn. For Pinterest, create pins from an image in your email and then link to the online version of your email. Then encourage people to join your list. I want to share something that happened that underscores the importance of driving social fans and followers back to your email list. On November 8, 2015, Social Media Examiner's Facebook page with over 380,000 fans disappeared. Yes, it disappeared. It couldn't be found anywhere. And the best Facebook could tell the folks at Social Media Examiner was that the page was still in the background somewhere. The founder of Social Media Examiner, Michael Steltzner, took to his personal Facebook and Twitter pages to post about it. He couldn't very well message or post about it through the missing Facebook page. They lost their Facebook page for two days. We talk about this in the abstract all the time, that you really don't own your fans and followers on social media. And we try, anyway, to show how important it is to use social media and email together. Encourage your fans and followers to also subscribe to your email list and vice versa to make sure that you're as visible as possible. We never in a million years thought that this kind of thing would happen to our friends at Social Media Examiner, but it's a startling example for all of us to consider today, right? Now, fortunately, Michael also has a healthy email list, 412,000 strong and growing. And between that and his other social media networks, he is still able to communicate with his followers. When it comes to extending your reach, you want to make sure that you're meeting your audience where they are. Start with email and reach more people by sharing your email content on all of your social media networks. Think about it this way. There's probably some overlap between your email contact list and your followers on social media, but those groups are not likely to be identical. Also, what your followers do on social media is seen by their followers. If someone comments on your post on Facebook, their friends will see that and see your name. Marketing on social media tends to be less expensive than traditional advertising. If cost is an issue, you'll get more return on your time, money, and energy by going first through email and subsequently through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and all the rest. Each has its own typical audience and decision process. You want to start at the social networks you already use and then begin to move to where your customers and contacts are so that you can leverage the existing network you have on those sites and begin to generate some social visibility along the way. 
We know you're busy, and you might not want to be or can't be on your computer all day. Save yourself some time by using social media tools. Constant Contact allows you to extend the reach of your emails by using the Social Share tool. Social Share offers a quick and easy way to share an email on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn with suggested post messages, images, and the best time to schedule posts based on when your social audience is most active. It also makes it easy to plan social posts for an email with a monthly calendar. You could also schedule your social media posts. You don't have to be sitting in front of your computer to post to your networks. Facebook has its own scheduling tool, but the other networks don't. You can use tools like Hootsuite to schedule posts for Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. It's also important to keep track of conversations happening on social media. You can use Hootsuite and Twitter to do searches on your business name or important keywords. Check out what people are saying and offer your services or expertise to help. It doesn't take a lot of time to keep on track with social media. Try at least 20 uninterrupted minutes at a time, three to five times a week, to make social media planning, posting, and monitoring part of your regular schedule. If you're interested in live, local events in your area, or more online webinars, go to our website, constantcontact.com, scroll down to Seminars and Training, and you can see the full calendar there. If you're not yet with Constant Contact, you can start a free 60-day trial by going to constantcontact.com. We have even more resources to help. Visit us at blogs.constantcontact.com slash library, where you'll find blog posts, guides, videos, infographics, recorded webinars, and more. Thanks for attending your social Now What? And good luck with your social media marketing.